come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who like the same kind of stuff that we do. A lot of likes. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. What do we watch tonight? We watched a movie called Ring. Did we? Did we? <laughs> Try again. <laughs> uh, Ringu. There it is. Ringu. All right. It depends on what part of the world you're in. Very true. Uh, directed by... Hideo Nakata. Okay. From the year... 1998. From the country. Japan. Japan. Mm-hmm. Are we All familiar right. with this, this dude? Uh, yeah. Dark Water. The original, the Japanese Dark Water? Yes. Okay. Oh, which is like the Elisa Lamb story, basically, right? That's that movie that's like when did he really that? similar story. He made it prior to, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. and then there were so many similarities. In like, the did you kill her? That they're like, <laughs> did you see this movie, Dark Water? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> right? it has like the same kind of. I haven't seen the original. I've seen yeah. the remake, though, with uh, Jennifer Connelly. Uh, yes, Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> why I wanted to bring this up was because, or do, you know, this yeah, movie why tonight. Come? Why are we well, entering we, into j We J-Hor. did um, uh, Paranormal Activity 3 last week, and I mean, obviously, you know, the, the found footage movie was like a big deal in the 2000s. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also the decade of uh, torture porn. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, don't, I hate mm-hmm. that title because everybody thinks there's porn. It's not. It's like, to me, they're bolt cutter movies, but like brutal. Yeah. Uh, you right. know, and then the American remake, Fever mm-hmm. and French Extreme. Mm-hmm. And there was also J-Horror. But I think that J-Horror is like responsible for like all the ghost movies that you've seen stylistically. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Uh, for the past. 20 what is it, what do you say 20 23 years 20, now yeah, you know we that. should really do a documentary on the on the early 2000s in american horror because we've kind of been like doing each part of it right a lot. and so right? we, i think we're kind of has nobody gotten to, to it yet they're all status. still going over like the history of horror from oh they're the still in the 90s uh, yeah. yeah i think the 2000s is like the what would that be the second golden age of horror uh that decade yeah I probably mean, it was um there was a lot of creative stuff going on. I mean, a lot of it obviously feels like, you know, remake fever, mm-hmm. but, uh, but a lot of original stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. For the first time since like, like the seventies, eighties, and then like you go dead in the nineties and then right. the two thousands, mm-hmm. there's a big, the nineties was a big stuff. transition period. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we got to two thousands technology boomed and we went through a lot in the nineties. Okay. Mm-hmm. We yeah. did. Uh, Hideo Nakata also did, um, well, okay. There's 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 a there's a twisted history Ooh, to this thing right. because uh, much like uh, our beloved Halloween series, Ring has many uh, spinoffs and alternate timeline Ooh. where you can figure out which sequel. Okay, that's really to- I'm really into that. So I'm kind of curious. <laughs> like I want to do the choose your own adventure of this franchise. So how many Japanese Ring movies are there? Uh, um, well, there's there's Japanese movies, Korean movies. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's. I, I, I didn't, I didn't actually. I didn't Ryan's actually literally checking his One, notes two, right three, now. Four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. What? Do I right. see a twenty nineteen right. date? I'm, on I'm one already of those? done with yes. this. I, that many ring okay. movies. Right. I had no idea that the ring was such an intercultural <laughs> phenomenon. Oh yeah, but either. that's. I guess that's the thing. It was the movie that kind of. I mean, it revitalized Japanese cinema mm-hmm. um, because everybody. Uh, wanted to do you know became i guess a worldwide phenomenon mm-hmm. so much yeah. that obviously hollywood picked it up and made a re- remake mm-hmm. um and there were dozens of copycats some of those became successful the jewel say, on the how, grudge i was movie. gonna say how long after was the grudge uh the grudge i believe was like the following year because yeah. like, that was I, real real quick and this is where sense. this is where sean and i were just talking about this off like my memory gets fuzzy because like i know those two movies are different but their aesthetics and their trailers are so similar, similar that i cross the wires all the time with those just, two all you gotta do is remember that Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, I usually go Naomi Watts or Sarah Michelle Geller is how I tell them apart. Right. So, Bill I Pullman's think, in that one too, isn't he? Yeah. He is. Yeah. Uh, my remake. big thing is that, like I've rewatched The Ring dozens and dozens yeah. of times. Yeah. I think I've only actually watched The Grudge maybe 
maybe twice. How many grudge movies are there? Four. There's four American ones. You know how many <laughs> Japanese ones there are? I mean, like 16. those those are probably <laughs> the most uh, you know, profitable and, you know, long lasting mm -hmm. of the two you know, two Japanese horror franchises. I mean, there's also like the Tomie movies. There's a lot of those, but am I missing one? I don't think so. I think like Ring and Grudge are like the, the titans of Japanese horror. Felt like it. So much so that like the Japanese, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, right? Like they had a Freddy versus Jason moment. Yeah. Where they had yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Versus, yeah. This. yeah. I remember, I remember was, that. This was a big moment. This was recent too, right? That like, was 2016. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. That wasn't that long ago. That was in the last five years. Yeah. 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 I remember that. I remember, I remember being like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm I remember they, they, one of them threw out, I can't remember if it was Sadaka or Kaoka threw out the uh, baseball at a baseball game. I mean, right. it was like, you know, <laughs> remember that. That's true. That's spectacular. For, yeah. So this has been going on since, I guess, this era. Prior to this, Japanese horror movies were kind of like, I mean, you had Japanese ghost stories in the 60s, 50s and 60s. Uh, Onibaba, Kwaidan was like a anthology of mm -hmm. Japanese ghost stories. Uh, one called Haosu. Yeah, that's House. a wild movie. Yeah, that's from the 70s. Yeah. And then in the 80s, they were doing a bunch of things. You heard about the guinea pig movies? Yes, the okay. guinea, the okay. flowers of flesh and blood. Yeah. Say what now? What are yeah. those? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you guys are going to love this book. Love. Okay, so this is like, I don't narrative-wise remember what the movies are about, but they're basically considered like the most controversial controversial films to come out of Japan. Okay. They apparently depict like real mutilations and maybe even like snuff kind of stuff. Oh. So is this Get like this, their... Though. Um, um, it's their faces of faces death. Of death. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. okay. And Charlie Sheen watched one of these movies and was so convinced it was real. He, he like called the oh. FBI and was like, you need to follow up on this. This is... <laughs> If you go to the Wikipedia for this movie, this is a section uh, on the Wikipedia. Hey, guys, Charlie's calling again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And then okay, there was, yes. did you it. know there was a, the American guinea pig series was the spinoff of the, I mean, like this Why is, is it. The, okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. <laughs> well, just the, so brutality, torture, uh, realistic maiming was, I guess, like what Japan was doing in the 80s. So this was kind of like a shift into going back to traditional Japanese ghost folklore in mm -hmm. some way. But it's also married to like modern Japanese sensibilities toward technology, which I think like the coupling of those two like took it into, you know, then that became the 2000s. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. It's a genius idea when you say it like that, like mm. bringing these two like things together like that. Yeah. Mm. So what were their thoughts okay. on technology that added to this? Do they were not trusting of it, like the, the advancement of it or just... I mean, it seems like there's, I mean, I don't them? know, that would be like a psychological read on it. I mean, sure. it feels like there's obviously some kind of anxiety about like recorded media and, you know, uh, pirate broadcasts sure. that are mentioned and, you know, what your kids are exposed to when they're off on their own and, you know, what what are they watching, you know. Is wow. it less technology and more like surveillance and that, that kind of surveillance that comes with the advancement of technology and not the technology itself, you know? I feel like that might be part of it i don't know it also tells, all this all depends on japanese culture as well mm -hmm. and, and you know as yeah. far as that goes and there's a lot of stuff i think like when we were watching it it feels like there's some some things here and there that may be like lost in translation i mm -hmm. mean that's obviously all the, you know when, whenever you watch a, mm -hmm. a a foreign film um the the story is based on a novel by a guy named uh koji suzuki right he wrote the book ring um, and that was so successful that he made sequel novels that were called Spiral, Loop, Birthday, S, and Tide. Uh, <laughs> Is he not allowed to use more than one word in his title? I think it's a, that's a stylistic thing. I was that gonna, he's yeah, doing. I was you keep going with that. I kind of <laughs> like it. What were they again? The next? Uh, ring, Spiral, mm -hmm. uh -huh. loop, loop, Birthday, birthday. S, S. Which is like a broken right, uh, is, loop. Yeah. I feel like birthday is where I get lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why so, so he no, had, he, had a, he had a thesaurus. Birthday is right. the prequel. Birth, I'm guessing birthday is the because it's the it's the it's it is. the first one. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the prequel. Oh wow. Well, we're going back and wow. trying to explain where the boogeyman yeah. comes wow. from. Wow. I get it. Okay. Okay. So this like it. <laughs> this is not the first filmed version of this movie. They actually Ooh. did it as a TV movie in 1995, okay. um, and I'm not. Entirely positive if Hideo Nakata had anything to do with that. I don't think so. But the release of this movie was really bizarre. They made this movie and the sequel at the same time and released them as a double feature in Japan. Interesting. 
but the sequel was not made by Hideo Nakata and it had a slightly different storyline, but it had the same actors in it. And so you'd go to the theater and you'd see ring and, and uh, the second one was called raisin or spiral. Uh Right. So this is where our split becomes. If you're going to follow these uh, alternate uh, timelines, but anyway, the first movie's quality is so drastically different than the second one that the audiences hated it. So they hired Hideo Nakata to come back with the actors again oh to make God. Ring 2. It is Halloween. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Wow. And so then there's uh, a TV movie called Ring the Final Chapter. There's, uh, <laughs> I'm guessing it wasn't. Was it number four in the series, too? I don't even know oh, if that I one. So. I think that. I'm not even sure which one that follows. Uh, there's the Ring Virus was the South Korean version of the same. That was a TV miniseries based right. on the novel. Uh, Raisin. I'm saying Raisin. Maybe it's Rosin. R-A-S-E-N was a TV movie. Then Ring 2. Ring O Birthday. Uh, <laughs> then it was remade in the U.S. as The Ring. Hideo Nakata did The Ring 2 here. Then there was okay. Sadako 3D, Sadako 3D2, <laughs> Sadako versus Keiko wow. from The yeah. Grudge. Rings right. was the American third yeah. movie in that series. Yep. Then Hideo Nakata <sighs> went back and made Sadako in wow. 2019, and I think that's where we are Woo! right okay. now. Wow. Okay, Great I just, job, Colin. Yeah. Wow. Bravo, bravo. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, need, I, just, I have to let you in my mind just for a second. When you, was, when you were trying to pronounce that word and you said raisin, I was... Immediately picturing the ring girl as a California raisin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instantly. Yeah. She pulls well, her hair because, back and she's like, right. she has <laughs> this long, you know, black hair covering her face. This is like a thing that, you know, I mean, you see it in Quiet On. I don't know where exactly that doesn't, comes yeah, from. Yeah, doesn't and, the girl in the grudge look just like that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. why you can get those movies confused. They're very confusing. Yeah. yeah. That's what you, you know, the Japanese apparently find that very creepy. A woman whose face you can't see and just has very long hair over it. So, and, uh, I mean, I like also find so it's, it's, it's effective. Yeah. yeah so if I walked yeah. into the grocery store and saw that, it'd be like, <laughs> well, that's, you know. So is the ring the James Bond of horror? Yeah, kind of. I feel like it is. In being like that there's a... a Multiple versions. Yeah. Made oh, yeah. by different countries. From, yeah. <laughs> based on novels. Yeah. Like, the, I feel like it's the James Bond of yeah. horror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a... I mean, it's a thing. It was yeah. a... Yeah. I it's mean, a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big, uh, big deal out there. So, I mean, that's what's kind of interesting, I guess. Go back. We're obviously... I assume you all saw The Ring. Yeah. Obviously. Mo- yeah. I, yes. Multiple times in theater. I, I think pretty frequently about the ho- horse suicide in that movie. Yeah, I think I. That's like the scene I can never forget from that. I movie. always think about the reveal of Amber Tamlin in the closet. Yeah. That scared the that shit. Is, yeah. Yeah, the like it is, it is like. still in my top ten favorite horror. Oh, movies. the way Brian Cox yeah. goes out in that movie is pretty wild. I too. love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. I'm watching forever. Yeah, Naomi Watts one, is a national treasure too. She really. So. Is I mean, it treasure. was. I think like you know. So it was what 2002. We said. I yes. think. Um, I thought that that was like you know like the scariest movie. We yeah, have big. Big mm-hmm. Hollywood mainstream movie, maybe in, you know, 20 years or something like that. It was like a huge deal. And it also ushered in the era of the PG-13 horror movie. Because uh-huh. it doesn't feel like it's a PG-13 movie because of its intensity. But, yeah. like, it's PG-13. And then all the producers went, hey, if we make it PG-13, look at all the money it can make. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like with a paranormal horror movie, you can get away with a lot more and still and still maintain a PG-13. Right. There's, like, oh, there's no blood or anything. Yeah. It's just spooky imagery is all it really is, you know? Yeah. No and actual it, violence. It mostly takes place in, in homes and houses. You and eventually, death. Yeah. 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 And Jason Blum eventually made this his, uh, you know, business model. It mm-hmm. seems like, you know, it's like, yeah. Hey, we can, do-. so there was a guy named, uh, Roy Lee. He's a producer. Um, now he's like a super producer. I, I can't remember the last things. I mean, I think he did like it, the, the couple of it movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, now he's big, but back in the two thousands, uh, he had purchased the rights to, a bunch of these Japanese horror movies and then exploited them, basically took them to Hollywood. So the Japanese, I think these actually quoted in some like back channel thing saying like the Japanese haven't figured out what's going on yet. So like <laughs> yeah. they weren't aware of the amount of cash that you could get off of these deals. Right. So I think they got them very cheap and then remade a fuckload of uh, Japanese horror movies. Cause we got the, what pulse, uh, one missed call. Right. Mirrors. It? Mirrors. Mirrors. I can't. That might have been a Korean one, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Dark Water. You know, right. there was yeah. all these remakes of Japanese movies. Sh- Shutter. For, yeah, Shutter was one. 
uh, that just seemed like they were cranking them out for the, the 10 years following the success of, of The Ring. So this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Ringu. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, obviously there's going to be differences. I suppose we're going to talk about this one, but we'll also be talking about The Ring. Of as course. We, as Naturally. We go along. Yes. Um, you got it. The, uh, and, and I was um, on... I don't think I was aware like the first time I saw it because it was new, but Hiroki uh, uh, Sonata is the actor who's in this, who I was like, uh, you know, on a later watch, I'm like, that guy looks familiar. I know him. He's in like, uh, I mean, he's in uh, he's in the latest Avengers is the last time I saw him. He was in uh, Lost. He's been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Mortal Kombat. Right. And he was in that movie Life with um, was that Ryan Reynolds? And Jake Gyllenhaal, right? Oh, oh my God, I totally I forgot, forgot that about that even movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was him, Rebecca Ferguson, right? And then wow. Ryan Reynolds, Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Rebecca Ferguson was, was in that movie? I think so. Well, well, that movie this totally right? got erased from my <laughs> brain. Wait, well, but that was like one of the... the that astronaut. was like came out right before COVID, I right? The astronauts? Uh, oh, so just called the I remember everybody before. thought that it was Sony <laughs> doing like a, a stealth <laughs> Venom prequel or something yeah, like that. Yes, yeah. The movie would have been so much better if they had. Yeah. Yeah. That's just me. Um, so we got a movie here that's ultimately about a cursed videotape. Um, the first thing I guess uh, I was kind of curious about, we were talking about this during the movie and I was like, okay, let's save this until afterwards. Why is it called? Oh, uh, uh, well the title I'm saying is ring because that is the actual title of the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, DreamWorks, when they purchased the the rights to remake it, suppressed the release of the original in America. It was out all over the world. I saw it through like an English bootleg nice. uh, back They're in like, the day. They're like, can't have this. We have our own thing coming. <laughs> yeah. So they retitled it Ringu to make it sound more Japanese, even though there is no Japanese word Ringu. Huh. <laughs> that's annoying so they're just doing that because they're like americans won't want that we'll yeah, just, yeah. Well, well just to avoid marketplace confusion sure, sure, yeah sure, sure. but okay so your interpretation why is it called ring i, I mean i'm only, oh, i've always been like i've every time i watch these movies i'm like why is it called this it happens every time i watch them but uh i was thinking in this one not only is it for the reveal at the end of the movie but is it the telephone ring as well i mean maybe uh, i mean this is a i guess i like that i always th- i see i go Back to the uh, yeah no my only version comes from the American version which is like the the, the ring actual, the light you can see at the top yeah, of the well a yeah. circle yeah yeah, yeah. and an they actually circle. explicitly make the line like well, you know you see the ring and then you die yes yeah. that's absent from this one yes. mm-hmm. because I, I do think, like the phone call thing but isn't ring supposed to be I think there at the end it's like basically the idea of this is a, a, a curse that's just going to keep on going yes. and going and going yeah but you don't get that to the last scene of the movie right. so the whole yeah. movie you're like why the fuck is this called the ring and then at the right. end you're like oh okay but it's like like, oh, that makes sense. Life, life For, is a flesser. I, like, if I access the marketing side of my brain, I'm like, no, you need to call your movie something else because people are like are going to expect a literal ring, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and then they did. I yeah. guess for the American when they cracked it, everybody's <laughs> yeah. drawing circles all over right, the place yeah. and all that stuff. Circles everywhere. Which I mean, I guess the well is really important, so you tie it back to that. It makes yeah. Sense, I was like, it know? makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I know that we're saying like, oh, Americans, we need it like you know, slapped in face with it, but <laughs> like it makes sense in this mm. in this case. I yeah. think you know. Yeah. Have you guys? I mean, have you seen like a lot of other J horror movies, or was this like the first like actual straight from the source Japanese? I've seen a movie. few others. I think I've seen. I haven't seen a lot. I think I've seen the original Grudge. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's. I remember that being like bits and pieces, yeah. clips because I watched a little bit of the uh, the crossover event that was. Oh yeah, yeah. the ring, the yeah. ring and, and the Grudge. But no, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty is, limited to mainstream. Yeah, yeah same yeah. here. Me mostly as well. Especially, well, yeah, as you discussed the history of it, like I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to jump into like, where's all the grudges? And just like, oh, <laughs> can't do it unless I was following. I think them there's as more of out. those than there are rings. Oh, Jesus, right. Right. really? Yeah, because wow. there's TV movies and there's movies mm. and. Right. But uh, also, video, by the time I got to the ring, the American, the ring too, I was like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Like, I got it. I think they're pushing it, like, the Americans are pushing it too far. So. But I'm curious and I kind of want to explore, like, the Japanese Freddy and Jason, you know? So it sounds like they are over there. So I'm. I would. I'm kind of interested now. I want to know more. You yeah. Know? And but you got to find your timeline. A Wikipedia yeah. will help oh, you out with that. True. Um, okay. So we got a. Uh, so basically, the movie is. A, I think this is also what kind of helps it. Right. It's. Uh, it's a detective movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Which is what some of the other movies that followed in its wake don't really have. But this is kind of like your propulsion engine. Uh, it sets up like there's a cursed videotape. You watch it, and seven days later you're going to die. So you have a seven day 
uh, time frame that it's going to take place in. And you have characters who are trying to figure out uh, how do I stop this mm-hmm. curse before it actually gets me. Which you know? was there a better time for detective movies in the late nineties? They were everywhere. Right? They were every like we're coming off of Seven and Pelican yeah. Brief and all this shit. Like it. When this was is the peak. Uh, like Memories of Murder? Um, oh, I'm curious. I don't know. I'm not Wong familiar Jun-ho? with that movie. Well, that's one of his movies that he made like around before the host and all that stuff. Or I think. That would be mid two. Th- I can't remember, but I'm I think it's like the two thousands. I mean, it was riding on the you know because there was a, this massive interest in you know Asian cinema at that point in time, which you know gave us Bong. Uh, what was it, Bong Joon Ho and yes. um, Char- uh, Chan Park Wook mm-hmm. and all the uh, you know Takashi yeah. Miike. I mean, like I've seen quite a f- like well, not quite a few. Takashi Miike has got like over a hundred directing credits or something like that. But yeah. his insane whole, amount. Yeah, yeah, his horror <laughs> movies are. Worth watching, yeah. I would say. Audition was the year after this, so I think like Love the audition. two of those yeah. were kind of on the festival circuit and kind right. of made like this breakout mm-hmm. thing. Um, there's uh, this movie. I think uh, Nakata also. I think uh, he had trained. I think in England, uh, so I actually learned how to become a filmmaker uh, in England. And I think he, you know, the impression I have is that he's taking kind of Western. Uh, movie making techniques and going back there's a lot of you know, like it seems like he's aiming for an inter- international audience what we were saying with the product placement you know a very like american or english uh you know pretzels and what was it the planters peanuts and the ritz oh, crackers yeah. and yeah, the ritz bits <laughs> yeah Hell yeah. Let me see yeah. Ritz Bits. Planners, Ritz cheese Bits curls, yeah. Yeah, Ritz Bits. Yeah. I didn't see them. Yeah, it almost looks it like, like product placement. It was, it was between their like, two heads, Sean. Yeah, it was seriously just like sitting directly Ritz. behind them. Like it was like centered in the shot. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I it missed was that. Right. It was <laughs> definitely some product placement. Yeah, I, I was the Ritz. like, like with, I wasn't too sure with the Planners cheese curls, but yeah, then we yeah, cut the to the Ritz, Ritz Bits. Bits. I was like, oh shit. Oh, yeah, there like, it is. I missed everything they were saying because I was just looking at that crack. Those crackers. It was the third face on the screen. It was right between their two heads. I was like, this is clearly a prominent character. Yeah. <laughs> that was in the opening scene that was right. duplicated for the the remake where you have two girls one of them who has seen this thing this vi- cursed videotape yes. right. and has that call that you're going to die in seven days and then she does apparently mm-hmm. or something happens and spooky stuff you know and the frame flashes negative yeah yeah so there's do you see like um i mean i guess you know after having watched it, I'm like, it feels like not only did uh, Nakata bring over that kind of, uh, you know, Western sensibility, stripping everything down, I guess, and just like, you know, this is a pretty um, straightforward narrative, which it feels like it could play anywhere, even though it's coming in at like the end of, I guess, like the VHS era. Mm. You know, it's like this is the last time you could probably get away with doing stuff on videotape. It even mm-hmm. feel like, felt like in 2002. We were maybe even past. Right, yeah, tapes were like. Oh, I think tapes. I was buying DVDs at that point. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I think so too. I think yeah. tapes were still that like. Oh, that's on a tape. Weird. Yeah. Like, oh, I still have to keep my VCR until I figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, being yes. in that weird limbo of having to have both. Yeah. yeah. It was like at that time I would buy DVDs, but I was still recording things off ta- off TV. Yeah. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. Or DVRs, like uh, they were probably still like new. DVR was maybe. still new. It was I think TiVo. Still expensive. Uh, it was TiVo at this that point. This was yeah. prime time TiVo. Yeah, this I was, was actually TiVo. thinking about TiVo when they were watching the tape. I was like, I was like, I bet Scary Movie did a parody of this where they just TiVoed boop 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 then, right yeah. past <laughs> it. I don't like this part. I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, I hate that my brain thinks in Scary Movie jokes. I was like, how do I undo this part of my brain? I hate this. I was, so many movies. Yeah. I was thinking about that too. I was thinking about when they, the phone calls. I need to see something mocking them when there's like a call center that's making those calls mm. yeah. you know oh, like how yeah. has no one done that yeah yeah right they like didn't they do just, that in they, scary just movie? Drop, they just put the I phone down next they... to a speaker and they get like uh feedback and <laughs> yeah. then they're like it's cursed <laughs> <laughs> like that was the whole thing yeah i need oh. the ring call center i need to see it <laughs> oh, <laughs> just a bunch of dark haired yeah. girls <laughs> phones with the headsets like seven days yeah uh, <laughs> holly- the <laughs> just with, with a cup of coffee and just <laughs> yep holly- i need it i need it i guarantee there's a shitty tiktok out there going around where it's like they pick up the phone and it's the your car's extended warranty robo calls i guarantee I'm sure. that I mean, probably. Sure. and it has happened i think the closest we got to this was uh cabin, cabin in, in the, the woods, woods. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah very true <laughs> yeah. definitely i love that they movie <laughs> That's <laughs> so good. That was good. Uh, um, there, there was. Um, I thought uh, there's influences of like uh, Videodrome, right? It's like clearly mm-hmm. Nakata saw Videodrome. Clearly, he saw the Changeling. I mean, there's a lot of like yeah. you know well imagery and right. all that stuff that's going on. At Which the end. why is a well always creepy? Because is it, it's 
unnatural, like ground because it gets slimy. So in the, yeah, deep and dark, and like, it's not easy to get into. So like, and you're always, yeah, you're always, you're always afraid. It's like, oh, I fell in there. Yeah. Nobody like, ever I feel find like me. we all have like an irrational fear of falling into a well. Yeah. yeah, I feel like or, it's there. But like we like walk baby over Jessica. manholes all the time. <laughs> I mean, that scarred me for life. Yes. Oh, that's what it is. It's it is. It's baby, Jessica. <laughs> baby Jessica. <laughs> it's because we grew up in a post baby Jessica society. Yes, so why. right, and she fell down a little well, yeah. a big well. And, so yeah. it and still she take was me. like in rough shape when they pulled her up. Like she was dirty and bruised and shit. Like. Yeah. No wells are no fun. All these kids keep falling down these wells. It's not good. No. Because the one happened. Well, I was going to say recently. It was like, like within the last decade, probably. Mm-hmm. There was another like baby Jessica situation well, right? every generation has yep. there's you a yeah, some kid going down a well. or yeah. a dog and you got to rescue the dog. Uh, um but the um so well you also amityville horror had the uh what, the stuff comes out of the well you know you have in the basement and stuff right. like that so you either you're going in or something else yeah, hideous is coming out comes from wells yeah or goes into them I mean, did you, see the water? did you see the water in this movie? That's not good. Oh, no, that's not good. So, this, still that's be bad. like water. best case scenario. They're only getting Giardia, right? Like yeah. best case scenario. Yeah. They have died of dysentery. Yeah. Hands yes. down. <laughs> Hands yes. down. It seems kind of foul. Um, okay. So we got our main character is a um, uh, like a, a journalist. journalist. Yeah. Is she mm-hmm. TV journalist? Or newspaper. I think, I think she's so. TV. I think she's TV because she's doing like a video interview with That's her. right. And they do spend yeah. a lot of time in the video yeah. room yeah. and all that stuff. So, yeah, video journal. And she uh, is like researching this uh, cursed videotape uh, story, even though her niece has apparently died of the uh, cursed videotape. She doesn't know it. So, mm-hmm. there's that. That's kind where of... I got confused. Was she doing the story because of her niece, it's... or was she, it just happenstance that she was doing the story and her niece died? I think it's happenstance. Is it? We come right okay. into her asking people about it first right. off, and yeah. then it happens. Because, I mean, that. Again, lost in translation, I'm sure, but it it's more fluid in the remake with Naomi Watts. It makes more sense. Yeah, and it's explained, I think, a little bit more. Yeah. Because yeah. in this one, you're right. It does seem like she's doing research on this story. And this is where we don't know, you know, when they're talking about the geography, it's like the kids from one kid from Tokyo, one from Yokohama. It's like, okay, how far are we talking here? Would these kids be going to the same school or different schools right. that somehow know each right. other and the, the Seike Academy or yeah, whatever that say, they, they put it together pretty well. I mean, it's not as, like you said, not as clear, but I still think yeah. they put it together pretty well. Cause they're just like, Oh, there's this kid and there's this kid. Hey, can you check out what school this is? And then she's got the signs out in front of the, um, the wake as it were. It's so a pretty big coincidence then. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It yeah. really is. Right. Or is it? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh. Uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> Well, she has a, a domestic situation with her young son, Yoichi. <laughs> he's a little adult, Colin. Yeah, yeah. He's just a small man. Yeah. Why are you saying that? Because uh, w- when she comes home, he says, I've laid your outfit out for you for the funeral. And he already dressed himself in his formal wear. And it's like, oh, so he not only is he a latchkey kid, but it's also like that kind of single mother son relationship of you're the man of the house now. So... Like, I need you know. some help. Yeah, he goes to school mm-hmm. on his own. He stays at home on his own. Yeah. He uh, passes his father on his own. Does he and know he seems to be, like, okay with so. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, okay with being on his own or passing his father? Well, according to his mother, he, she, uh, he's used to it. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. yeah. You've given him no other choice. Yeah. Yeah. It seems <laughs> like he, like, has resigned himself to the latchkey kid life. Yeah, this life, kid you does know? feel resigned. Yeah. It's like he he's sighs a lot. out. Yeah. 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 Oh, Jesus, well, he Mom. has, like, a kind of, I mean, I guess it's the, you know, they, they, he's directed to have, like, this kind of emotionless, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yes. uh, personality, I guess, through the movie. In the the remake, it feels like the remake, uh, you know, came out in 2002 and The Sixth Sense had come out in 99. Yes. So it felt like they took the kid from The Sixth Sense and basically plopped right. him down. Yeah. They, and so he he feels a little more off even than this kid. I, I, I remake, prefer yeah. this kid, though, to like the overly precocious, yes, like, I, like I talk kid. like a little adult. I hate that shit. This kid, like, plays it right, if it makes mm. sense. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah short shorts in his backpack. Like it, I feel like with this kid, you get the sense that there's like this undercurrent of resentment towards his mom, right? Like he's keeping it together on the surface, but underneath he's, he's like, like, he's like, this is hey. not fair. He talks. He's like, all right, mom, I understand yeah. <laughs> the situation. Yeah. I don't like it, but I get it. But we can't do this forever. Right. I understand together, I have to mom. do this to survive, <laughs> right. but this is not how it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. And now you're bringing a videotape yeah. into this shit. Right. Come yeah. on, mom. 
Yeah, because this, I guess, is the thing we don't understand or don't know that much about Japanese culture. But I mean, the fact that like the, the father character uh, is kind of like whatever they did there it's like he just kind of took off you know yeah. and was like because he's like oh he's but in like, school now move it's five like, blocks away yeah 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 and that's it <laughs> like that's as far as he took off mm-hmm. yeah he's like uh yeah i'm not taking care of that kid it pretty much seems is that like, what yeah it's it like no things your like problem yeah. i mean like what <laughs> i mean again i like there's so many things that like i can't help but compare them to the to the remake because that's the one i'm familiar with obviously but like the little kid in the remake he's they make him seem creepy right Mm -hmm. yeah this kid just seems like a normal kid i mean it seems grown up but he seems like a normal kid Mm. he's emotionally exhausted yeah yeah he's He's, he's tired from raising himself he's already lived a life (laughs) but the one like i think they were going sixth sense style like they were making him very creepy in the remake and then also like it just seemed like it made more sense the dad not being around like in this, it seems like the dad fully knew about him and they just got divorced and was like, oh, I don't want a fucking kid and just mm-hmm. bailed. Whereas in the remake, it seems like they were young yeah. and like, it's like maybe he just, it just didn't work out. It just yeah. didn't work out. Yeah. It's, it makes more sense. Again, it could be a translation thing. Yeah. Cause I got the impression in the remake that like, you know, dad was just kind of, um, irresponsible you know like yeah. you kind of get that yeah. read off of that character yeah he's irresponsible and just like oh you know i couldn't take care of a kid so i'm doing my own thing this one we're not he, this guy seems very responsible in his he's a professional professor, isn't he? yeah, yeah like a math teacher or something yeah. like that and it's like uh so but, what's going okay, on but was that scene okay now that i'm thinking about that scene where they were at his house, and his student comes, comes over. His he's fucking piece? that assi- Yeah, he's yeah. fucking like that assi- he, Yeah, that's why I'm like, okay, maybe this is the problem. Is that She's he's got fucking attitude. His She's student. like, who's this fucking woman you brought over? <laughs> right. She yeah. is not happy. Yeah. She went grocery shopping for that man. But, yeah. okay, he just said that was his student, though, right? Or did yeah. he, No, uh, he his, did. His, yeah. like, assistant? His no, like, he, said, he, said, he said student. He said student, and then he said, like, assistant. So, like, a student assistant. Right, yeah. But no, definitely a student. Definitely a student. But not a teacher's assistant, a student student assistant like she's still yeah. a minor or or if it's he's in not, college she's still way be, too young uh, yeah. to say the least frowned upon yeah but it's it's unsavory yeah at yeah. least here yeah. it would be. at least we here, don't know what's yes. going on there don't yeah. know but like <laughs> why but why else was that scene in the movie right it was it had to have been there to show like oh this is what caused well the that's split, what, right yeah, i can't t- see this is again where i don't know you know that if character it's a cultural never comes thing back. Uh, except for the sequel she's like oh, the main character. but okay. uh the you know i can't i don't know if i can read it like uh you know that he is having an affair with her. I mean, as an American watching it, it's like, oh, he's having an affair with the student. Yeah, you know, yeah. mm. like she brought groceries in and seems kind of dejected. She goes did... into her teacher's house, period. Yeah, right. I'm right, sorry. Yeah. Have you guys ever been to your teacher's house just to hang out? No. And she we she calls him night. sir. So there's this that like, kind of, you know, separation, I guess, and socially, how you refer to yeah. you know somebody. Yeah. So it's like maybe it is kind of like a platonic thing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, in the remake, obviously, they go, no, he's having an affair with. Uh, well, it's not a student. It's like another video editor or something. He's a video editor in the in the it might uh, have been an intern. In- intern. Yeah. Might have been oh, an intern. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. That'd be the American equivalent. Of yeah. The- yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interns. Yeah. It's a dangerous proposition. Yeah. Well, he becomes involved in the plot because uh, that's that's the Lifetime movie, The Intern, a dangerous, dangerous proposition. proposition. That is. There you go. Uh, copyright twenty twenty one. Dangerous proposition. That's Saturday perfect. Night Freak Show. Perfect. Are you writing that down somewhere? We're gonna forget about it. We have it, it recorded. Should, okay. I write it. Uh, <laughs> so um, he becomes involved in the scenario because, of course, uh, uh, Asakawa goes off to uh, investigate what happened and ends up at this cabin in the woods. Nice, beautiful uh, mm, place. Nice place. Yeah, where she finds the built uh, over death. <laughs> 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 Well, like she doesn't know that. Who who is the developer? Who knows? Uh, but she finds the uh, cursed videotape. I like the way that it's just kind of like uh, you know, it's. Just, I, I love it because it, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, anime. Anime, anime. There was there was tape. the birds. I saw the birds had the birds in there because okay. I had it, well, I had an English like subtitle on uh, it. But, oh, okay. So there was one other horror movie at least there. Okay. Well, that's good. But then yeah. she gets this like she sees it and she gets that. I mean the music. There's a feeling there. Mm-hmm. Like, and the, like the jarring pan up on the Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. I think there's some like static over yeah. the image or something mm-hmm. like that, which is supposed to imply, I guess, the psychic thing. Because there's a lot of psychic things going there's on a in lot this of movie. Yes. I was going to say, when you said yeah. it was a detective movie, I'm like, it's a detective movie with a cheat. 
Yeah. I will say, because mm-hmm. they get to some places they wouldn't be able to get with just being regular detectives. There Such is. as. Yeah, like, it's like species. <laughs> just like species. <laughs> the same. They even go into a deep, dark well at the end of that movie. So it is the same. Um, what'd you say for, uh, like, uh, I mean, just stuff like the backstory of, uh, is it, what's her name? Sadako. Sadako. He literally yeah. gives info dump monologues. Yeah, he's there's, there's exposi- some stuff. This is, yeah, how the movie gives you exposition is through psychic... But they only show one flashback, and the rest of it is him just being like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then you're like, oh, so I guess he had, like, another vision at some point we didn't see. Yeah, yeah. and he's yeah. kind of putting stuff together, and yeah. I mean, it's like, what he's putting together, I mean, it's a movie, but it's like, well, it sounds like it works, it feels right, like he's obviously got the information. I yeah. instantly thought of, I'm sorry, but I instantly thought of Twilight, Yeah. when Arrow Arrow gets every thought you've ever had just by touching you, I was yeah. like, so that's what we're working with here? We're yeah, in Twilight much, right yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah. like, that co- kind of comes out of nowhere. It does. You it know, comes like, out of nowhere. Yeah. And, like, they do so much library research that turns up nothing. And then he just has to touch a guy's arm and then he's got right? all the info he needs. It's like, like, I feel like you probably could have saved some time. Just yeah. Why were, why were you bothering with the library if you have this power? Yeah. Just start walking. Why? Down. Just start touching yeah. people. Just, dude. just get some names and shake hands. Call yeah. it a day. Let's yeah. do this. Well, what's the- <laughs> I mean, you could walk into these visions, apparently. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the other thing. How do they walk in divisions? Oh, that was pretty cool. Where did that come from? Aura, aura <laughs> it's, it's like a, like it's like so a bubble energy. that you yeah. walk he into, like, apparently. So he's got ESP. It's like microwave. He's got ESP, and he projects it to the next yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah apparently. Like, yeah, don't get too close. <laughs> yeah. Because you can... F- oh. All right, I'm having ideas about. I was like, I oh, you could fuck with sounds time. Like some okay. X Men shit. Yeah. Sounds like something X Men would do, you know? Yeah, but I mean, that's a cool scene. She runs into like yeah. a, a flashback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know the uh, the whole idea of like psychic phenomena seems to be like uh, a mainstay in J horror. Mm. And then that was one of those things that kind of made me self conscious about like American horror. It's like, is there a lot of stuff that we just kind of take for granted in our movies that like Maybe. as a foreign audience watches it goes like. Huh, that must be a thing in America, you know, right. where it's not really. Yeah. But like it, may, the movies make it seem like we believe in something. That's true. I do wonder what <laughs> what of our movies um, other countries have latched on to be like, that's an American thing. And we'd be like, what? Oh, God. Now, like, I, no. now I'm going to be thinking I'm about so now I'm going to be thinking about what's the worst representation of us that people have been like, yeah, probably the Larry the Cable Guy movies or oh, something. Right. Yeah, probably. Like, probably. Yeah, probably. You know, I'm just like, what's out there that people could be like using as a worldview? Yeah. Right. <laughs> they see yeah. it in every American movie yeah. and they're just like, because eh. I mean, I see psychic phenomena in every goddamn Japanese horror movie. So it's like. Did they believe in psychic? Or, you know, I mean, it's right. just like a mainstay. So, you know, it's just a movie thing or it's just a way to get exposition where you otherwise couldn't get it. I know, <laughs> yes. I know they're super like superstitious. I was, into I was just going to say that. Culture, yeah, they're so. very much into paranormal in that aspect. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's like a big thing for them. Mm-hmm. Well, it does fill in some gaps because we find out a lot of things about. Uh, so, I mean, I guess the investigation is uh, like they have to undertake it because uh, Asuka has seen the video. She's got seven days to live. She gets a phone call um, because she's at the cabin mm-hmm. and a, the phone call is reportedly supposed to tell you seven days. I think in the American remake, it actually does. You hear voices in seven days. Yeah. You know? And yeah. this one, you just hear the creepy music. Uh, and then so he watches it. Uh, her ex-husband or whatever, a kid's father. Let's say mm-hmm. yeah. they get divorced. Uh, yeah, was it no. ever said that they yeah. were married? Oh, yeah, he did. He said, yeah. said my yeah. ex-wife. My ex-wife. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, he did. Uh, she makes a copy for him to watch because he's uh, uh, also in this field and an expert. Video analysis yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. See, is he? That's what I got. He's, got, I, he's he like a equipment. math professor. <laughs> well, they go to well, no. Maybe. They go to her. They go to her workplace. Oh, that's where right. They're going. That's right. Yeah. Maybe. I think she just trusts him, that might and be so she's, she's like, like, help me with this. I don't trust anyone else to to figure this out. Yeah. I mean, I get that. Yeah. And, he, mm-hmm. and I mean, all of them kind of are coming from, like, a rational perspective of, like, there aren't any curses, so we can just watch this videotape. Uh, right. How did how the videotape play? Obviously, you've seen the, the, the remake. Less flies in this one. Isn't there a fly that comes yeah. out of the TV and yeah. shit? Yeah, okay. Because we got... Cooler computer effects. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, there was more in our tape than there is in their tape, yeah. isn't there? Our tape kind of seemed like a uh, student, well, I would even say very student film. Uh, uh, you know, it seems like a big budget, uh, you know, it's very like artsy. Very, yes. Um, I don't know if you consider this one artsy. Does it? I. It's unsettling because I don't know what I'm looking at. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what this footage is, so that's that's what makes it creepy. It's just like this one guy in a hood standing pointing, and then it's people like weirdly crawling across the ground in a way that, that looks like was, a torture camp. That one yeah. was creepy. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's it's because I don't know what I'm looking at, so my mind's like trying to fill in the gaps with like the worst possible thing, you know? Right. right. And especially, I mean, us being Americans, this is culture we I personally don't know too much about, so I don't. We really don't know, like what we're looking at and this could all mean other things to japanese culture than it does to us right us looking at it is just unsettling well, I yeah suppose some of the things that they do like you know the videotape i guess is supposed to in some ways the the american one really makes it explicit but like yeah. the images that you see are clues that you will see on your voyage as you oh, try okay. to get closer to the ring like she sees a centipede and then there's a centipede she sees a ladder she walks under a ladder it's right. like you know, she's kind of getting closer to it. In this one, they are mining the videotape for uh, clues, right. but it seems less like you're going to actually see all yeah. this shit. Like right. we, <laughs> we do see some of like we see the mirror that she's in. Like we, when they go to stay at the the inn, we see the mirror. Right. Yeah. And then later on, like she has a vision of the man pointing, mm -hmm. but it's not as obvious. Like it's really piecing more together in the remake than it is in this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The remake gives you a lot more crumbs to, you know, it's yeah. like the videotape is more important, I guess, in some ways there. The yeah. only thing that like really I thought was like a big difference was, um, I mean, like, as far as the story goes, well, I guess it, they still get you to the same place, but uh, there's they find a hidden audio track in it, which says something like frolic and brine goblins be thine. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know they, goblins were coming into that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and they're was, like, what was the a shocker? It sounds like a saying. Well, right. yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's, that's well, pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, they don't have Google, so they have to go to the library and look shit up. Yeah. So that's where your psychic phenomena doesn't fill in. That's why you yeah. have to go to. Yeah. I think that's be and there, there's like a mention of an eruption and all this. Yeah, it's like one, one of the one of the yeah one of the pieces of footage is just like shaky script. Yeah, I think it's like yeah, a newspaper. Running, it's, just it's, it's shaky script. It's yeah. like the script is bugs and they're just running into each other. Right, mm -hmm. like under a microscope. A yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. There you go. That's but it's it words. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very strange. It's like, I Maybe think it's is that what words like, look like under a microscope? But it's like it's a, just made up of uh, more words. Isn't it like I thought it was? I thought it was supposed to be like the newspaper, but like they say they can't read it on a regular TV. I don't understand that. It's moving around and it's weird. It's something about an eruption. Eruption. It's all it says is just oh, eruption. Think she said they can't read it on a regular TV because. She's talking about you can slow it down at my work. Oh. Like on my machines, we can stop oh, it, bouncing, oh. read it, yeah. right? Oh, okay. we can stop a frame and read it if gotcha. we can. That makes I think sense. That's what she meant. That makes sense. Mm. But that eventually leads them to like Mount Mihara or something in the Izu province, which is apparently a, uh, a peninsula mm. somewhere that you have to take a ferry to. Which is where we're going to get to the like where the whole curse started. And I, man, when I tell you I was waiting for something to happen on this ferry ride and then nothing did, I was a little disappointed. That's right? because <laughs> you saw the horses. Yeah, and like, <laughs> so I was expecting a similar thing. I'm like, uh -huh. all right, something's going to happen on this boat because that horse suicide was pretty awesome in the remake. I forgot like, about the horse suicide. It's like the best scene in the movie. She just she's just chilling on the ferry and goes to pet that horse, and that horse is like, get the fuck away from yeah, me, lady. Yeah, yeah, and takes yeah. off. Off the boat, it's like disturbing, yeah, yeah. because yeah. like something in movies when animals can sense there's like your curse, yeah, I trust them. Ooh, that's like, <laughs> yeah, animals, like, mm -hmm. yeah, nope, I'm yeah, like, I'm, I'm going and, with like, you. That horse noped out so hard it jumped off a boat, like, like, yep, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, yeah. I've never swum before, I'm gonna try and swim now to get like, off this boat. We always see in movies like horses rearing, like when something's wrong or like kicking and stuff, but this horse that wasn't enough, he needed to fully like commit suicide yeah. to get yeah. away from Chewed his up lady. by the propeller, mm -hmm. red blood yep. in the water, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a showstopper. It is a yeah. set piece. Yeah, it's but that's maybe wild. why they put it in there. They felt like you needed more, like oh, of yeah. a, a moment, you know, in this kind of like leading into. I suppose it was the in the middle of the second act or going into the third mm -hmm. act of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, here, I mean, because that's like when you look at like how the, you know Americans interpreted it. Uh, they had to, you know, the whole thing with the horse farm and all the horses were dying because of this little girl, that, mm -hmm. you know. And so the Japanese one is very different, I guess. They they ultimately serve the same purpose. Yes. But you bring in this whole psychic phenomenon thing again, because in this one, her mother predicted an eruption because she's mm -hmm. psychic. And yeah. so then a uh, the guy who lives on the peninsula must have called a doctor uh, from the mainland to exploit the situation because it did erupt. Yes, 
And so then they put her to the test in like the series of televised or recorded, you know, uh, news events right. where they try to test her ESP ability and somebody dies at one. And in the flashback, it's revealed that that's not actually, she didn't kill this guy. It was her daughter, yeah. Sadako. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Just a fucking, I, I laughed a little bit because when they, uh, in the flashback, when she's like, Sadako, you did it. And the kid runs out from behind the curtain with the law. <laughs> I know. That, that made me I, laugh. That was funny. I'm just that like, that's a little laugh. too comical at this point. I felt like a scary movie. It bit. did. It like, really yeah, did. That. Yeah, you're just in like normal situations with the creepy yeah. hair and everything. Yeah, a little comical, but yeah. I but get it. it's pretty funny. Like, you guys would totally tune into a live ESP demonstration oh, yeah. TV, oh, right? Fuck yeah. 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 Could you imagine the event television that would be if it happened? Like, would, people would be like, oh shit, you guys are going to watch that chick do ESP on TV? <laughs> I know. Like, no, I'd want to be there because I'm. Uh, I want in those situations unless I can ask the questions. Because I assume I, everyone's a plant. Well, I know. Yes. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I think I can figure it out. <laughs> what I think, and I want the opportunity to try. Like the closest we got in the '90s is when David Copperfield would do those live magic shows. We'd be like, I'm going to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. Or like when you pick a card on the screen. Yeah, yeah, the right. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your yeah. hand on the screen. Yeah. What is your card? Oh, yeah. there it is. Like you motherfucker. I'm just surprised that nobody that amazed like, me as a it kid. Did, yes. <laughs> I'm still amazed. I'm, I'm not still gonna lie. Amazed. It's still great. I still don't get it. Nobody in the movie like remembers that this like uh, you know. Well, I mean, I guess it what is 40 years or something like yeah, that. It's it passed yeah, it is. Like you yeah. figure this would would have been a media event, you know, in right. some way, but uh, it's apparently been forgotten mm -hmm. or suppressed. They're just like we can't. This can't be out. Yeah, wow. maybe. I don't know. And apparently, uh, the doctor takes the kid. This is what we find out later. Mm -hmm. This is uh, where, how it's the origin is revealed. That he so the mother after the demonstration goes bad apparently throws herself into a volcano right. and commits suicide. So the doctor takes the kid and throws her down a well because First he hits she hits her can, in the head. Yeah, with that that noise. That's an unfortunate. Sound, it sound is effect. an unfortunate noise <laughs> in this <laughs> movie. It is, it's that. <laughs> It, it is that very distinct, noticeable sound effect of somebody getting hit, and it's right there. Yeah. Like, ah, okay. I thought the sound design, other than that, was like okay, I, and that I think one it's was yeah. like pretty Ooh. great. Like the, especially um, the no when they when they first uncover the well. And this is going a little forward in it. The noise that comes out of it—that's scary as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like that. It's not in that scene. It's not like overblown. It's not in your face, but it's it's there, and it just sounds like. Don't go on that well. Doesn't the remake like a bunch of flies fly out? Probably, or something like that, probably, probably yeah. because there's flies mm -hmm. in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, just go with the creepy ass noise. Like if you get it right, that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. It was an, an unfortunate si a sound effect that like kind of you know it's like okay, it's like, what are we doing here? I mean, that could be in a trailer and that would be fine, but it's in the movie. Oh, well, this bad. the but, movie also makes this kind of implication later on that uh, Sadako is because it. it explicitly says that Sadako was the uh like illegitimate child of this doctor who's married mm -hmm. and uh her psychic mother mm -hmm. right but then later on it's implied that it's possible he killed her not because that she was a monster who could kill somebody with her thought but because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't even his kid and it was actually uh, the father was not human this goes back to like this whole kind of aquatic horror thing that the movie has going on. It starts off looking at like the sea. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of sea imagery. Obviously, a lot of people are fishermen. And okay, is, well. is that actually what they were getting at, or was that because I I didn't get that until you said that? Okay, there's a scene. This is the only thing I have to back this up. Okay, yeah, there's only one scene. For this. All right, there's one scene that kind of backs it up, uh -huh. where the older fisherman guy, where he's basically saying that talking the mother about her looking out at the sea and would talk uh -huh. to the sea, talk to the sea. Got and it. I listened in once, and it was not a not human, human language. Okay, and it's like okay. did something come out of the sea, and like uh, they got jiggy with it. Like so, she fucks the kraken. Right? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just one okay. Came out. Yeah, I know. All you folks who little magic. Yeah. That's, all you need. that's all you need. One time, <laughs> dude. That's a Tuesday in Greek mythology. You know, right? That, that's... <laughs> <laughs> right. That's yeah, I mean, demigods, I, gods, I, I everybody. In those. Okay, I didn't put all that together, but now yeah. you say it, I like it. But this yeah. is this is bizarre, and this I guess takes it right. kind of very different from the right. American version. It's like, huh, okay, that's where you're going with it. Um, Always come back to the tentacles. Damn you, Japanese. Yeah. 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 
Well, they can't let go of it, really. No. You, and the you live on an island. Yeah. Yeah. Japanese, you creative <laughs> bastards. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, then you have women with tentacles for eyes and stuff like that. You just go butterflies for uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. ears. Yeah. There's tentacles coming months, out yeah. of the worst places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or better places. Not my <laughs> culture. I don't know. Yeah, the Japanese, <laughs> like they're, yeah, well, it, creepy and weird uh, horror movies. Uh, yes. So, um, the, uh, so anyway, the, the, the plot eventually leads our uh, protagonist to this uh, cabin because this is where it's been built on top of the well. Yes. So we got to go down in the well and actually find uh, the remains of Sadako. This basically is exactly the same as it was in the American uh, version, um, right? I mean, Pretty much, virtually, same, yeah. serves the same purpose. Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, race yeah. the sun because and right. bring out buckets of water out of the well. Well, no, they didn't do that in the they remake. Did the buckets, no, they didn't do the buckets in the remake. They didn't do the buckets. No, no I think she goes down there. She, she definitely goes down there. She falls down, doesn't there's she? she? Oh yeah, she that's falls right, into the it, TV cause... falls and smacks her in the face. It's yeah. a lot more dramatic because yeah, goddamn it, just... America, we're gonna do it like bam. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no buckets in the remake. Right. She's just down there, and then she finds her body, and they pull her up. Right. And there then, is no skull spl- or uh, hair split in that one, is there? No, no skull split. It does. It does. But she finds the hair, and she pulls up the body, and right. it looks like it looks fresh when yes, she pulls it up. That's what I remember. It looks fresh, like and she yeah, just died. because I think that's like what she's envisioning. Yeah. And and then don't then, they like? Then they and then like, it's like, show like, what her actually, it's like decayed. Yes, yeah. 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 In this one, she you know, pu- yeah pulls the hair apart, then it almost pulls the rotted face apart and then the it, oozing eye socket yeah, yeah that's that's a nice gross. green ooze like yeah. the, that was like, gross there you go. that was like those were eyeballs once yeah mm-hmm. disgusting yeah. and you guys were not liking the fact that they were in that water that was oh, disgusting. That was disgusting. disgusting like it's got a I just know how it smells there are so many parasites in there there's can, gonna be a parasite like that a, swims up his ass it's got like, like an just, yeah. oily surface like on it sewer. he's gonna be and shitting for weeks it's cloudy you can't see through it at all like it's black yeah and like even clear water you can get diseases from even water that looks okay you can get sick from so this it's like Ugh. algae blooms don't look that bad that's, that's why people die from them yeah. like mm-hmm. it's it's jesus disgusting. would have been better if the whole thing was covered with cobwebs and they had to go down through like all these spider webs in order to get yeah nope. there was no spider creepy. it's creepy enough yeah. hey, like <laughs> yeah. sure yeah add spiders does, why not does japan not have spiders yeah i was like there should have been, been, been a lot of webs down there under the under the deck yeah that yeah. should have been covered i mean maybe in it was hermetically sealed and she is still fresh I'm just putting it out there. Don't give me that. <laughs> but there's water. You know, ah. like, okay. uh, I don't. Re- I don't remember there being a bunch of spider webs in the in the no. re envisioning the remake either. But so maybe not. Um, but anyway, lies. as we know, that is not the end of the movie. The idea that no. uh, in this movie you find the body and you lay it to rest. Right. This is like uh, Ghost 101. Uh, you put the 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 because obviously this is something that bad has happened. Your, your sympathy is with the uh, the person in the well. Mm. They were mistreated, mm. and if we put them to rest, mm. the the curse will be over. Mm. And then a Ring goes, "No, we're gonna keep going." So, <laughs> so it, it's funny that when it gets to the end, it's almost like the rest of the movie didn't matter. Almost like it matters, but the reason why. Because they do find the body, and they think it passes her time, so they think they've lifted the curse. Yeah. Right. And then we've come to the end, And that was which just is a giant waste of time. Giant waste of time! <laughs> yeah. Because the reason she figured out, because the ghost tells her and points in her bag, is just like, oh, I made a copy and showed it to him, and that's why I'm okay and he's not. The whole adventure kind of didn't need to happen, <laughs> but, but we, we, but we, we saw the ring. There's the ring. <laughs> there's the ring. But yep. here's what takes the wind out of my out of my sails for this. This is basically a chain letter. <laughs> yeah. If you don't pass this on, uh, yeah, I mean, it's you will yeah, die. It's yeah. Yeah. There's it's, that it technological follows. anxiety. Yeah, it's it's the was... original chain letter. Yeah. 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 I mean, and it's I, an I urban remember legend, people right? making that comparison back when the right. ring remake came that's out. That's true. Yeah. But I think yeah. that's why this thing Forward this, this to 10 people. <laughs> yeah. so that's like, why people do it. There's a like, fucking phenomenon in this email. <laughs> so yeah. is there any of these movies where someone copies it and leaves it at like a blockbuster? There was a Just ending, fucking someone's right. got to get it. There's an ending that was shot. I think it's uh, available on the deleted scenes on The Ring. That's how they they tried to end it was uh Naomi Watts and the kids yeah, take it to a blockbuster and leave it put, on a show. Put it, no, I like yeah. I'd like it better if they just put it in the return box. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, that, <laughs> that'd be a good that'd be a good shot. Just yeah. show up on the yeah. return box, open, slip it in, and then. Psh, no, yeah. that one they leave good. it on the shelf and just kind of push in on the tape on the yeah. shelf, yeah, yeah, but yeah. then they cut it out because I guess that was like, well, you're killing somebody. I mean, their solution I'll, here, I'll go with it, is yeah. you know, it's like you know, it seems. You know how like, many people are going to be scared to fucking death to go on a blockbuster at that point? And just, <laughs> that's like almost oh. great marketing. I was going to say, could you imagine as kids if we if we knew that about blockbuster, like, oh, that was a that's why it went out of business. People saw the ring they're like i'm not going yeah there. Yeah, yeah can't touch a videotape again. Mm-hmm. uh but this See, they one could, oh and they could use that as a marketing strategy like go to blockbuster and find the one un- unmarked tape do you remember yeah. When, yeah. The, when the 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 remake came out they were sending out like videotapes or leaving them in parking lots I, there was like this whole something. thing there was because it yeah. seems like my memory of the remake is coupled to like the like i knew the about the original one but there's like this marketing that i knew about through sites like ain't it cool news yeah. or yeah. joeblow.com or mm-hmm. chud.com yeah. remember the creature corner whatever mm-hmm. would do all these stories and of course the studios would tell them hey we're we're leaving uh, videotapes like mm-hmm. yeah. in parking lots, and it, it was the creepy videotape. You played it, and it was like, "What the fuck is this?" Mm-hmm. You know, it's you got marketing. the curse. Yeah. yeah. Um. What did you think? Okay, so I mean, obviously, this movie has a very strong ending. I think that's the the whole why the ring is remembered uh, because she crawls out of the guy that Sadako crawls out of the TV at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is like, well, wow, I didn't see that coming. Even though we're saying in hindsight, it's like, well, video drone and demons too mm-hmm. had, you know, right. things that came out of televisions, right. but and even we've seen um, the ring before this. So like we knew she was coming right. out of the TV, but when I saw the ring and it happening, like that was like, Whoa! blew my mind. Yeah. yeah. Blew my mind. The yeah. effect looks really good in this though. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not yeah. bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, I like yeah. the it's kind of lo-fi version mm-hmm. of it and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't need to like have static on her and have her jump, you know, because right. that was the thing. Like, yeah. this one moves slow, Sadako moves crawl. Right, this yeah. one would uh, jump cut to you yeah. at certain points. Tomorrow's like, yes. bam, she's standing right in front of you. You yeah. know, it's like, mm-hmm. eh. I mean, it's a just, it's a different, you know, it's, I guess it's a cultural difference. Yeah. Right. You know, Definitely. that's what's cool about yeah. watching these two movies. It's like, how do these two cultures. What mm-hmm. creeps them out? Yeah, right. you know the Japanese are more creeped out about something slowly coming at you. Yeah. The Americans are like, like, it's there. Tint. We like blue tint. We like blue tint. <laughs> blue, tint. <laughs> blue, tint. <laughs> blue tint is scary. Yeah, and jump scare. You know, yeah. jump, jump scare. scare yeah. All about the jump scares. Yeah, it's amped up and mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's a, yeah super fueled. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the end of it does kind of imply that this is the beginning of like a uh, urban myth, and then mm-hmm. it's gonna because. I guess that's the thing. The movie ends with like a Terminator uh, it shot. It does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. It's coming over and everything. <laughs> um, and then, but you, we hear, like, you know, and I can't remember if the American one does this, where it's like you hear voices of people talking to each other about how the, uh, no, the like curse is continuing. Mm-hmm. They didn't do that in the remake. Yeah. Okay. Cause that feels like information that she, cause that's coming from the, the girls she interviewed, right? I think it's just, you know, or is it just them talking? Voiceover of stuff that's happening, okay. like mm-hmm. you know, in the future or whatever. You know, it's like this is it's a continuation of people who keep sharing the videotape, and they know you have to make a copy right. and pass that on. Mm-hmm. Okay. But does anyone does anyone get petty with it though, and like copy it, right. and give it to someone they hate? You know, I'm or sh- like a, but right? that first, weaponize it. You know? That version has to be in there somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to, wep- to be. Yeah, yeah, to weaponize it. Like, yeah. come on, right? Although I suppose that's like uh, it follows at a certain point. There's 15 movies. I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's got to be in there. <laughs> like, Somebody does, does be someone try and send it to the president at some point or something? Right? This you is the ring should have done. Like, what happens when you? I was like, you could send. I was thinking, I was like, you could send it to like a death row inmate but then they can't send it out to somebody so then it then what happens what happens if it just like stays with the person and died that it killed most recently what happens then yeah well you suppose you're just waits till the next person they're the only ones who know about it Mm -hmm. the idea here is that there's like you know 15 then there's you know uh, 30 and then like a pyramid scheme yeah yeah (laughs) it just keeps expanding you keep getting downlines you know until until you're at the top of the pyramid yeah it's a pretty good idea keeps happening like if we this is very uh, a smaller microcosm of Japan. If we just pulled out from Japan, would we just be seeing a lot of Sadakos everywhere? Yeah, this happening to a bunch of people. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. Why does she want to kill people? I mean, because she was killed. I, yeah, that's all I can figure. Uh, let's. I mean, because in the remake, we get David Dorfman, the kid, explaining to us she never sleeps. You shouldn't have done that, Rachel. Mm-hmm. She never sleeps. 
Yeah. See, or whatever. I, yeah, she just, I dug it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like the remake when she's like, we... We we saved her. She's she's okay now. And he's like, "Why did you do that? Yeah. Why did you do that?" And his nose starts bleeding. Yeah. I remember watching the theater. I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> that was really effective. <laughs> yeah. Creepy little kid. I like creepy him. kid. He's like much it. more creepier than Yoichi. Yoichi is very lovable. You wanted. Oh, he's yeah. adorable. Yes, I don't he's want adorable. To him. He shouldn't no. watch that tape. Him mm-hmm. in his little shorts. Mm-hmm. Poor, I know, but poor she's baby. Like, well, at the end of it, there's a shot of like uh, Asakawa, you know, like uh, she's like, I know what I have to do. And she takes the videotape and then she calls her dad and she's like, dad, I need you to do me a favor. So she's going to give it to her dad. For- yeah, Luigi. she's giving it to her shady. dad. But then what does she tell him? I assume well, you, you, only because of the no, voiceover. Like, there's no rule saying you can't tell the person. Be like, well, hey, right, here's but, what we're going to do. Well, well, no, <laughs> but that um, that uh, her character kind of hinges on that. I think, yeah. Whether she tells him or not. What yeah. it's going but why to do, wouldn't she? Happen. I don't it's know. It's her dad. But, Why would would he, she, but would he agree? But yeah. it's just really weird that her thought is, I'm going to give it to my dad, and now I'm going to give it to a stranger, give it to Blockbuster. That's what's weird to I me. Think, is like, I think maybe she does tell him, because she has a, a better chance of convincing him that you're doing say, it for I, Yuichi. You're old, so it doesn't matter. You'd be doing this for your family. I'm telling you, that's why she picked him. My, oh, yeah. but, well, my, my thought behind it is if, okay, if I was going to do it, I wouldn't be able to just go up to a stranger because I'm like, I don't want them to die. I would have someone I know do it because I'd be like, here's what we have to do. I'm going to have you copy this and watch it. Yeah. And then you have to do it too. And we have yeah. to keep it going. But if you're wrong, they did. Yeah. True. You know, like if they don't True. buy into the story you're telling. True. You know, like, yeah. yeah. I assume just based on what the movie tells us, the fact that we hear those voices over the, the end shot and they have the they have the knowledge that you have to copy it means mm-hmm. that she told her dad and, and yeah. he passed it on and it just keeps passing She probably on. like did a story on it, right? She's a journalist. I wonder. That's what it, it was, goes it even was, bigger. It was her it was her story, so Isn't that part of I have no idea. I've never seen it. Rings doesn't it get does the video get broadcast to wide at a certain point, like from a, a TV station or something. You know, I saw that movie and can't remember anything about it. I Except was, that Vincent D'Onofrio <laughs> played the Vincent D'Onofrio yes, part. Did. Of was course. Was he blind in that one? Uh, uh, maybe. I, <laughs> I was wondering if, what if, in one of these sequels, I wonder if someone takes it and puts it in the in the TV VCR combo rack for like an elementary school class, you know, when it's like, Oh, we're going to watch a movie today, kids. And they will. And that Kurt, someone put it in there and a whole classroom full of kids. Just watch that shit. I mean, yeah. these are all like, great endings to movies. So like, all great cliffhangers. Do all those kids then have to copy it? Yes. And give it. Well, yes. yes. Right. They would have to hire me to write these movies. They got a bunch of things. <laughs> or, or, yeah. You know, when they had the wall of, they still have them, the wall of TVs and, and stores like and time just... or like Times Square. Oh, <gasps> all of this could be New York York City. <laughs> The potential, and what are we doing? We're yeah. putting Johnny Galecki in there. Oh my god, I know. Yeah. they show it on the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't think they went big enough with yeah. uh, no. <laughs> I want to see, see Avengers sized consequences for this yeah. shit. Yeah, the That's ring how- end game, the yeah. ring end game. That's how the snapping happened, huh? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There was, there was a ring commercial during the Super Bowl and oh, half yes. of them. All of this is yeah. like, Thanos watched the tape. He's like, I'm not dying here. I need stones to figure this shit out. Yeah. Well, there it is. Well, now we'll have <laughs> to go and up. watch just, some of these we, other movies. Because, we just wrote the whole franchise yeah. Yeah. for them. And so. we crossed it over with the MCU. Yeah. I think we should Jesus. end there. Yeah, I think so, too. I don't think we can get better. Because I don't think they did that. But uh, yeah. who knows? I mean, I want, you, you Look, know, but the freak show will do it. That's right. God damn it. You can do a remake. You can keep it going, right? I mean, yeah. what the hell? I mean, I mean, keep it going. I mean, There's ideas the there. The point is just keep going. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, tell you what. We're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. I'm going to say ring. I'm still saying ring. Okay. It said ring on the menus. Ring. That's fine. So we'll title it Ringu on the right. actual One is thing. the ring. This can just mm-hmm. be ring. It's just ring. Uh, but first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to need uh, the help of our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He grew out his hair for this episode. Mm-hmm. It's creepy, Igor. And he crawled out of the well uh, that I have in my basement. Oh, that is he where he like lives. The well. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Colin just showed us the videotape tonight. That's yeah. just his version of it. You know, so, a oh. funny story. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no. So I used to host uh, at uh, my old house. I would have these, like, uh, movie uh, marathons and yes. stuff like that and have people over. And I... Uh, had found out about this movie through, uh, you know, like the film festivals and the, you know, and I got a copy of it. And so I showed it 
And then this is back in the days when like your house had a phone. And so <laughs> as soon as the video aired, I called the house, you know, from my you phone. You gotta. Yeah. yeah. And freaked everybody out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Bravo. That's what you have to do. Well done. Bravo. Good uh, job. I remember, I remember doing that. We rented this from Hollywood Video. Oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. that was yeah. And, oh, yeah. and I don't remember who. Some of my friends were over. I don't know who hadn't seen it, but I did the same thing. Called my house. Mm -hmm. You gotta. And we you have like, to do it. Bitch, you got seven days. Yeah. <laughs> Just right I was thinking about doing it tonight. I was like, oh, man, I missed my shot. I was like, what do you do? You got to call everybody one at a time. Just leave call, a message. Call the group chat. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they're like, yeah. nobody's going to answer you while they're the watching it. Yeah, it doesn't work the same. Uh, okay. About now, if you'd set it up right, now something would ring right now. Yeah, right now. He did get a phone call earlier, so that was the re that was the red herring. <laughs> for the right, I'm not sticking around. I'm not watching anything. Oh after this is over. Colin already got his call. Spooky haunted phone calls. Oh, that's one missed call. I was gonna say like we got something yeah. here. Okay, uh, haunted Polaroids. They did that too. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, we should remind people how they can get a hold of us if you want to participate on this interactive portion of our show. You can go over to Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Ring or Ringu. Neil Gums says, there's nothing better, nothing better for spaghetti. Wait, what are we talking about? Said, right. It's a joke. Ringu. Ringu. Ragu. That's Ragu. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Adam Kaler says Ringu is not. Or, or Ringu really got the spooky ambience down, especially the eerie music and sounds. Yeah. However, there's, there was one exception when Sadako's father knocked her out and dumped her down in the well. Yes. I did not read like that comment. That's great. It was bad. He, well, he says that he thought it was from the 60s Batman TV show. I mean, yeah. I was yeah. expecting to hear a well hung Solid. scream with it. Other than that, I thought it was a great horror movie, and I wish I had seen it before the American remake. Yeah. Yeah, those are all valid points. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, I was in the eighth grade when this came out. I was just starting to get into horror movies, and maybe I'm missing something. But after having movie parties with friends, watching all those other 80s horror movies, and then trying to watch others alone, maybe that's why I didn't like it so much. To each their own, says the Green Goblin. Enjoy the freak show, but can't say that I did as much. Mm. I feel like this is better to watch alone, right? Like, I think that's what he's saying. He, oh, gotcha. he went from party movies gotcha. to like mm -hmm. watching. Yeah, I can see the, that. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of movies depend on atmosphere and situation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, Peter Gatt says I recently rewatched this movie and it's a good film. Question: Is this the first time viewing for any of you? If so, get the atmosphere right and make sure you watch it in a darkened room with no distractions. <laughs> we did. We did do that. We were our only distractions. Yeah. There yeah. You go. And the <laughs> the rock to the head noise. <laughs> <laughs> that took us all out for a like, oh. yeah. uh, Simon Carter says I really like this movie if you ignore one of the body's facial expressions looking like the world's creepiest O face then it works as a really atmospheric <laughs> horror experience and that goddamn twitchy cam is always creepy true yeah why is that creepy I don't know why that bothers us so much. You know, know the glitchy can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it feels is like creepy. it's like an outgrowth of like Jacob's Ladder when they were doing that like yeah. sped up and then you know everything yeah. was just kind of yeah. It's, it's very unnatural jarring. movement. Yeah, yeah. that really is. Speaking yeah. of O faces, which one do you like better? Um, the aftermath. <laughs> now wait for it. All right, don't judge me. <laughs> don't judge the question yet. I haven't even got it on my mouth. <laughs> Which did you enjoy more, <laughs> the faces on the victims from the remake or this one? Remake. In, in this one, they are they're wide open, eyes open, and they're you know like they got scared. In the other one, they're a little more like they're uh, deformed. They're deformed. Yeah. And Something happened, happened to yeah, them. Yeah, but like deformed, like. You could easily be like, okay, they got assaulted. This one, it's just like, why, the, why is their face frozen with the mouth open? I mean, know? I think they're both creepy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely both creepy. Um, I found the remake more effective as far as, like, scaring me. Yeah. Because they had those shock cuts, too. They do. Yeah. They had them in funny. here, too. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Around the same moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here they have, I mean, I guess they're contorting their faces, but in the remake, it's like, that's a Rick Baker effect. Yeah, you know, That's is. a molded, sculpted, you know. <laughs> Because America, yeah, we, we, we can't just go by, by what nature gives you. Right. <laughs> you got to mm -hmm. do sure. it one better. Uh, Travis Legler says, I was in the, eight, or sorry, uh, Peter Gett. Whoop, I said that one. Simon Carter says, <laughs> I really like this movie. If you ignore one of the, oh, I said that one too. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> sorry. Paranormal Activity 3 was the movie right. we watched last week. Michael Whitaker said, I'm going to throw out a theory that the first found footage horror was actually Orson Welles' radio broadcast of The War of the Worlds. 
I like that theory, actually. I can get on board with that. I mean, there's no footage, but I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's the first, like, story that was happening in real time that's passed right. off They're as presenting being real. it to you yeah, as, like, the, this yeah. is The real. first fake out, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's adopting a... Well, I would say uh, the novel Dracula, right, mm-hmm. is told in letters that's, like... It's it's kind of like I mean I suppose that way it's found footage we found yeah. the letters right. and put them together in a book and this tells the story. Yeah. Of footage just happens to be ink on paper. <laughs> yeah, uh, Steve Carney says I remember seeing Paranormal Activity three in the theater. It was okay. I liked that it was set in the eighties. Nothing in the franchise will ever equal the first time watch of the first film and how it creeped out. I was seeing it at home in broad daylight. It was mm-hmm. one of those movies where how and when you watch it matters. That's a great. It's true. Yeah. summation of that movie mm-hmm. like some found footage movies you really have to like set the atmosphere for you know well pat mm-hmm. hetfield says i've never had the urge to watch paranormal activity three or any of the other paranormal activities despite having a customer where i used to work tell me that when he watched the first one he couldn't sleep for the next three nights i'll probably listen to the show anyway because you always have a lively witty discussion about the movies oh thanks Aww, that's so nice uh pro tip just turn a fan on at night you don't hear any of the creepy noises in the house <laughs> yeah. i think that's why i sleep with a fan i don't have to hear anything i sleep with a fan too yeah. Yeah. no it's the white noise you yeah. fan yeah. sleeper people i don't get it you're not uh, no my oh. husband my husband is but i'm not okay Okay. Uh, but wait, but, do you get do you get uh, ancillary fan noise? Um, like, are you, is he, here's the thing. I'm a freak fan? of nature, whereas I lay down and like I can fall asleep within ten minutes. God damn it! And I, I can you. do it in almost any location. Like, so I, and I sleep heavily. So whatever he does, I'm damn. unaware of. So okay. like, thankfully, I'm not a light sleeper because that would be ter- terrible. Very envious right. of your you, can, yeah. you can stand the 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 breeze from the fan. He, right? It's on his side of the bed, okay. so I don't feel it very okay. envious of you because yeah. they probably yes. make no. like uh sound you can queue up on youtube or something yeah. i mean there, like no there's an app there's an app that's a fan yeah, yeah. I, yeah. in uh in a pinch of, i've used lots of sound machines mm-hmm. and actually youtube has some really good like rain ones it's like 24 hours of just raining mm-hmm. or those ask, are nice those uh, you know are nice that- yeah, she'll I know. There. I know. She'll do she it. who shall not be. Yeah, named. we yeah. can't say her name, but she'll also do it too. Does it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, about the uh, the previous week's episode was Guns Akimbo. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Grant Parrish writes in and says, "If all the players are just killers killing other killers, how much do the cops of the dystopian future care about intervening?" And mm-hmm. Can you guys explain what gun fu is? I always thought it was the equilibrium slash matrix style combat martial arts who punch shoot you, but shoot them up and guns akimbo are more like guns are magic to me. Mm, punch shooting. I like that. Punch I, guess, shooting. I guess like my interpretation of gun fu was like just highly choreographed gunfights. Yeah. Maybe that's like, the wrong term swing, for there's that. Arms yeah. swinging yeah. and yeah. all this stuff, and you're so jumping under, and doing over, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. defying yeah. physics, yeah. 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 You know? You're kind of yeah. jumping all over. It's like you're doing a, a form of a karate martial or kung fu, a yeah. martial yeah. art or something, but you're not, hit, again, you're not hitting, you're just firing yeah. at mm-hmm. the point where you would be punching. If, right? yeah. if I'm wrong like about that, though, yeah, let us know if that's not the correct term. Do we have to narrow it down is the question. Gun fu is specifically martial art gun fu. I mean, maybe. At all. I mean, but that's kind of what they're saying, too, though, right? Because they said the transporter, so it's like... Or no, he said uh, Matrix and uh, Equilibrium. That was uh, with uh, Christian Bale. And was I've never seen an Equilibrium. Wanted so. Gun Fu? Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking, yeah, right. I would say wanted, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because the, the whole point of that movie is like, we can arc a bullet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Our arms. It's yeah. like, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So, Mythbusters what? tested it, Colin. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> what? The, you can't shoot around a corner? No, they um, did it. They um, literally did the scene from Wanted on Mythbusters. Man. You couldn't do it. Yeah. I thought I read somewhere, and this is, of course, <laughs> conflating stuff that the Israelis had covered up, come up with some kind of gun that could shoot around a corner. I mean, and it, I never Ner- heard anything more Ner- about it. Nerf has done it, so I don't <laughs> see why we can't figure that see, shit out for right? the military. Yeah. Uh, Tony Bradshaw <laughs> writes in and says, Samara Weaving definitely has her uncle's potentially psychotic smile. Mm. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. when you said that. Samara Weaving, I'm like, are we back in the ring? What's yeah. going on? Yeah, oh no. <laughs> Guns Akimbo. Andrew Bradford says, growing up in the 80s, I don't recall an infusion of red and blue lighting schemes like in Guns Akimbo. I'm not sure where this scheme came from. Yeah. I don't know either. But we attribute it to the 80s now, even though we know that's not right. Yeah, because <laughs> now I think we're trying to do, I think, like... We collectively, for some reason, remember the 80s as the neon decade. Right. And so you're trying to come up with this like neon lighting. But the actual lighting, I think, comes from it's like Mario Bava pioneered that. And why they did, I think uh, the Italians did uh, that Technicolor lighting 
Did is Baba because, do Black Sabbath? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think it was because to them, um, you know, it was fascist Italy through the war, and they couldn't get movies. And I think one of the first movies they got when the war ended was like uh, Snow White mm-hmm. in like this Technicolor. I mean, I I think the way I've understood it is like the importance of that movie in Italy yeah. cannot be understated. Oh. <laughs> and I think like, that's kind of where it's like, we're making a movie. We're making it in technicolor. <laughs> and they just used all this okay. gelled lighting and Bava, then Dario Argento. And, you know, finally now it seems like everybody's doing that look. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Anthony Oliva says, I love the resident evil merchant reference in our guns. Kimbo <laughs> episode. That was me. I did that. Right. I just, what do you buy? I mean, yeah. you are the most literate in the Resident <laughs> Evil movies, so True. yeah, I, I would you one yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> was not hot. Well, uh, Travis Legg writes in and says, "Guns Akimbo is such a glorious film," and the chairman summer intern says, "It's very, very fun." Okay, yeah, it's a fun mm-hmm. time. That's mm-hmm. a good name. The chairman's summer intern. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's Bravo, nice. bravo. All right, no, it's just a. Okay. Just the name? Yeah. The chairman summer intern. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh Don't all right. So, John, let's move on. <laughs> so, so about tonight's movie. <laughs> no, no, I'm fine with everything else. That broke me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie ring. Starting with Holly. Oh. You gonna go first tonight? Well, you weren't here last week, so yeah. I figured I'd give you the floor true. first. Yeah. It's true. What'd you think? Um, so yeah, like I like I was saying earlier, I have seen the remake of The Ring dozens of times. I've watched it so many times. It's one of my favorite horror movies, um, so I'm very fond of it. Um, so coming into this, you know, I do have blue tinted glasses on as you will. Um, it's green, damn it! It's like swamp green. I'm sorry, green tinted. It looks like that. It's bluish. It does. Okay, I think it's bluish. That is obviously bluish. But... Yeah. Um. That being said, like I, I did actually really enjoy this. Um, I think it's a good movie. I think if you haven't seen um, the remake, I would watch this one first, just because there's. I, I just I, I think you need to watch this first. There's there's a lot that once you see it in the remake, it's not as impacting. It's not as impactful. Like once you once you watch it in this version, so yeah, I would say watch this one first. Um, but I liked both. I, I liked it a lot. Um, it, the, the scares aren't as effective, I think, as the remake. I think that's part of it. Um, you know, like we were comparing the, the faces of the victims. Um, I think it's scarier in the remake. Um, but it is very creepy in this one. Mm -hmm. Um, especially since like, it's, it's just like a look of shock, you know, there's not really a lot of, there's not like makeup involved like there is in the remake. So there's there's still like a creep factor, just like the realisticness of it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I like this one. I think it's good. Um, it moves at a decent pace. It's kind of a slower, um, kind of a slower story. But it's like you said, it's a detective story. And I love that. That's that's my jam. So I'm definitely OK with that. Um, yeah, I think it's good as, as like kind of an intro to Japanese horror because I'm not super familiar I think this is definitely a good one to start with. Um, this makes me want to look want to look into more and check out more. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend it. I think it's a good time. Um, and obviously, I recommend the remake because it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, watch this one first. I think mm-hmm. I think it's a good intro. Um, Michaela, what did you think? I uh, you know I really liked it. I'm not super well versed in J horror either, and I think that's just because like the marketing for the U S remakes of them all looks the same and it's hard to tell them apart. So I think that I unfairly think once I've seen one, I've seen them all, but hearing about how many others there are and how deep these franchises go, I am very curious now. And I really want to see more, especially because I think Japanese folklore is really interesting and it's just so like fantastical, I think compared to what anything we do in movies. And I, that's really cool. Like the whole story about it, like she was talking to the sea and she, but she also like had ESP. It's like, wow, well, there's a lot going on in this one, like <laughs> yeah. character that's like not even in the movie really. Like that's cr- <laughs> Like they went deep on this. So like, and like the way they turned on her, like didn't seem that bad. Like they, it was like a rowdy press conference, and like <laughs> right. that was like <laughs> fraud. That, I yeah. say fraud. <laughs> that was it. And then they're just like, "Fuck you, you're dead." And that like derailed everybody's lives, like, right? Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like Jesus, calm down. Yeah. <laughs> like it seemed like an extreme reaction to the situation. You know, you have ESP. You're gonna have people doubt you. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then but she couldn't handle it. Um. 
But yeah, I would definitely recommend this. I think it's worth a watch whether you've seen The Ring or not. It's probably better to watch this first, but even if you've seen The Ring, definitely watch this because I think there's a lot to gain from it. It's well made. It's well acted. It looks really, really good. Uh, the effects look good. Everything about it looks good. Nothing about it really is not aging well. So, Sean, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think I agree with both of you. Yeah, you should definitely watch this one first if you mm-hmm. haven't seen any of them. Just because, like you said, this will have more impact if you haven't seen right. the, the more yeah. uh, definitely more intense The Ring. Yes, because um, I remember that being a very intense movie. When oh I yeah, saw it. Um, but this one is uh, this one is very good. I, I love the. Um, uh, the the detective element of it is really mm-hmm. good. Like you said, it's a it's a slower because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it also goes really fast sometimes because we have ESP in this and we just get information. <laughs> um, but fuck, this movie is creepy, and I think a lot mm-hmm. of that, like the sound design in this, like I liked it. Like they're using the right sound. Sa- There's it's sharp sounding stuff. Um, there's also just it sounded like voices moaning near mm-hmm. the end in there. Mm-hmm. Whatever they did, the sounds they got for this movie are, I think, fantastic. Like it creeped me out. Um, I, yeah, the acting's good. Um, I, you know, uh, I, I like the kid. The kid's an, another good reason it's to great. see this. Just, I think the kid's great. Um, yeah, this is a good movie. Um, I am curious about kind of the, the, the rest, because they made so many. I'm just curious where they've gone. Um, this might be a, a, a Wikipedia deep dive at this point. I think I'm going to go through and see where they've gone with all this. But, I mean, uh, I'm curious about that because of this movie and how well made it is. So I'm definitely going to recommend it. Um, uh, a very good movie, very creepy. Um, yeah, I liked it. It was good. Thumbs up for me, Colin. Well, I mean, now I'm at a point where it's very hard to separate the two. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. the this one and the remake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I had the. I was fortunate enough to catch the wave of this as it was like breaking in America. And I remember the enthusiasm of it. Uh, the English had got it before us. And obviously it was playing in theaters and everybody was talking about it. it the English thing. got to this movie way before us, as we discussed during <laughs> yeah. this movie. Yeah, well, British pants and all. I think the, uh, well, the, uh, yeah, yeah. And the, uh, the version that we watched is from Arrow Video, so obviously it's been translated by the British also. Um, there were, I think the only American version of this is um, the DVD that came out um, around the time that uh, the, the Ring uh, came out on video. They put them both out like on the same day or something like that. So you could see the original, you know, right. but it basically it was suppressed. I mean, you know, the only way you were going to find it was through like a bootleg or convention circuit or something like that. You f- saw it at a film festival. This was from the era where it seemed like uh, my recollection of that time and place was, uh, <clears throat> you know, American horror cinema was very focused on domestic movies, English language movies, and then we kind of became aware of like, I remember uh, hearing, I think for the first time that like in uh, Canada, they did the Fantasia film festival and like all these uh, cinema fans, fantasy film fans would go and they would sit through movies that were subtitled from other countries because they wanted to see brand new ID, you know, like they were kind of tired of the same old, same old, which I guess is where we were like all through the nineties. You know, it was all scream clones. And I mean, it was kind of, or you're living off the fumes of Mm. the seventies and the Mm. eighties. And it was like, okay, we're going to kind of open it up to international cinema. And it really does like feel like ring, uh, was part of that wave where, uh, American audiences became aware of, like okay there's actually oh, other people make movies cinema yeah because every you know when you watch a horror the history of horror documentary now it always includes like you know what uh other countries have done and i don't remember that being a part of like history of horror right, type always docs the case. prior to that uh it so this is part of i think like opening the world up in in cinema you know and then you go back and see what they were doing before and you're also like there's a whole bunch of stuff that they're doing now that, you know, you're interested in and, you know, the ring gets you into that. Well, now I got to watch, I'm trying to find that, uh, that hit. Right. And so I'm going to watch every Japanese horror movie and they cranked out a shitload of them because they knew you wanted them and they're not all very good. Colin's just describing his two thousands. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now. That's my like, I got to find that hit. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was like, then the French are doing crazy shit. And yeah. it was just like all over, you know, the South mm-hmm. Koreans. Maybe this is why we're so uh, apathetic. Now we just need to go into the foreign film market and Maybe. find something new. Well, no, Maybe. it's like, you know, I I'm, said I'm doing it, Colin. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I got to give you like a warning. Okay. Unfortunately, 
the Japanese have never, this is the the problem with their cinema. They haven't changed. They, yeah. They're, they're still doing the same thing. You know, like they had this moment and they capitalized on it, but like they were never really able to move into anything else. And so now when you watch their uh, horror movies, it's like, Oh, it's another version of the creepy mm. girl coming out. Of, you know, sure. And it still kind of has that uh, that thing to it. So it's 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 unfortunate in that way. But I appreciate that there was this boom, you know, uh, in the uh, the late '90s and and 2000s. I think uh, Ring itself is, uh, you know, obviously I think it's like a super important movie in the uh, the history of the horror film. Right, I'm gonna say that. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no I agree. Yeah. Especially movies. after going through all the information we've done tonight, I would agree. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I'm saying that with the caveat is now, you know, it's like I would give the edge to the American movie, you know, only because I guess what I'm an American. That one is more tailored. You know, I'm like, is it objectively better? A better version of the story? It's more complicated, mm-hmm. right? They overcomplicate things. I mean, they there are tentacles that, and mumblings to the sea in this. Yeah, but it's not. No, but character complications. Yeah. They're 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 trying to make the characters have more things to do. There's trips to the insane asylum to get records, and right. there's uh, trips to uh, psychiatrists on the island, and the whole thing with the horses. And all. Yeah. I mean, it's a much more complicated movie. This is kind of like, yeah, we just got a through line that we're kind of following here. So I appreciate its simplicity, but I think. This is one of the rare cases. I mean, I can only think of like a handful of, of 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 these where I would say like you're like, well, which one do I have to watch? The original or the remake? I'm like, I think they both basically serve the same function, you know. And I'd probably give the the new one a uh, the remake an edge on uh, production quality. You know, it's like okay, mm-hmm. that's the better produced one. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the thing that Americans do really fucking well. Are we <laughs> are we supposed to say if we? If we recommend the other one over this one, are we supposed to no, talk about that? No, uh, no, I'm just saying okay. I, I would I would recommend them both. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think obviously whichever one you see first is probably you it's going to be more impactful. It's going to yeah. be more impactful because I remember uh, sitting at the theater screening for The Ring, the remake, mm-hmm. and I knew where it was going, and it was just kind of <laughs> curious of what's going to happen, and that was one of the like greatest movie going experiences I ever had. Because there was like, I, for that screening, I think I've told you this before, there was at least two rows of teenage girls up front, <laughs> like right under the fucking screen. And for that entire sequence at the end, they screamed, sustained, <laughs> it felt like forever. And I'm like, this movie is going to be a hit, you know, <laughs> like you knew it right there. I'm like, this is great. Um <laughs> And so, yeah, uh, uh, but I think, you know, ultimately coming back to this inspired, um, I think because, you know, you're saying it was, it's like a slower paced movie. It relies on kind of psychological dread, Mm. you know, going forward. Uh, This changed the trajectory of the horror movie uh, Mm -hmm. worldwide Mm -hmm. and especially like Mm -hmm. the American horror movie. So uh, its importance can't be understated. I think you should obviously check out Ring or if you're going to call it Ringu. Fine. Uh, Colin says, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next there week, we're, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. We're doing a yeah, little, we're a little, switching we're it up. swap for a very special reason. It, Holly, it's an we, emergency. It is an emergency. Yes, yeah. um, Freak show emergency. What are we watching emergency. next week? We, we decided that there is, there is a... Uh, we're having a moment. We're having a moment. I think. Yeah. yeah. The, the the horror movie genre, the world. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Every once in a while, a movie comes along and it just disrupts your whole life and you yeah. have to talk about and it. And collectively, we all decided that we need to talk about Malignant. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to happen. Not, not the one on Tubi. No. Because there is a Malignant on Tubi that not is that not one. the movie you want to watch. Not that yeah. one. The James Wan, 2021. Yes. Malignant. Malignant. Yes. All right. The disruptive force of 2021. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So we're watching Malignant next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>